howdy there, partner. Welcome back to more Old School RuneScape. In the last episode, I was doing some questing, and in between then, I've done a lot of streams here at the Tithe Farm. And so, you will notice that my farming level is pretty high now. It is level 68. So, thanks everybody who came out for those streams, but I do want to dedicate an episode to Farming Tithe and actually show you what it's all about. You will notice I'm already wearing some of the rewards here. I'll be going over all the rewards, everything. This is a good reward here, the Grickler scan that can essentially hold a bunch of water, but let's go ahead and go. Let me show you where I am on the map. This is in the southeastern corner of Zaya, south of Hosidius, so that's where I am. Let me talk to the farmer here. Hello, young sir. Did you want to work on my farm? Tell me about your farm. I grow fruit here, special fruit. It grows very fast, but it needs a lot of tending. Otherwise, it gets blight and dies. These days, I'm getting old and slow. You can see all the dead plants from where I try to farm them. Tell me about yourself. I'm a fruit farmer, but now I'm a bit too old for that. Maybe I should try writing books again like I did when I was younger. I'd like to work on your farm. All right, take a handful of seeds from the table and head into the farm. When you've harvested some fruit, deposit it straight into the sacks. Remember, you have to water the plants at each stage, otherwise they die of blight. Fertilizer makes them grow faster, or die faster if you don't water them. You'll gain a little extra experience if you grow enough of the fruit successfully. All right. So as he suggests, let me grab some seeds from the table here. And depending on your level, you can grab different ones, so of course you need to be at least level 34 to do this. But since I'm 68, I can grab these mid seeds here, the Bolognos seeds. And you can take as many as you want. I'm just going to get the full 10,000 here. And then you can head in. Hey, young sir, do you know what you're doing in there? Tell me how to grow these crops. Grow those seeds in the patches. When you've harvested some fruit, deposit it straight into the sacks. Remember, you have to water the plants at each stage so he's repeating some of the things that I've already said so I'm gonna tell him I'm an expert don't ask me this again that way every time I go in here he won't harass me all right young sir I won't talk to me if you ever want a reminder okay so there are different strategies that you can utilize here I'm gonna be showing you a few of them starting with the fertilizer strategy which generally I don't use this is a good strategy if you don't have full graceful your agility is low you don't want to be running around too much you want to use the farmer outfit because you're not going to be using as much stamina. So, by the way, the Grickler can, it essentially holds a ton of water, so I don't have to carry a ton of water. That makes sense. Okay, so for the fertilizer strategy, I basically just start planting some seeds. Just going to plant all of them at once here go to this plot and work my way back up try to do this pretty quickly and then I'm going to fertilize and water so the fertilization does make it go a little bit faster but it can also die faster if you're not quick so you gotta do it fairly well And as you can see, you can kind of cancel the animation with the watering. The only problem is like right there, what I just did. If you do it too soon, it doesn't work and you lose some time. So you kind of have to be a little bit patient. Should be able to get this done though. Of course, I am using the Farm Tithe plugin, which shows these little timers. The timer is deceptive if you're doing the fertilizer strategy, though, because the circle, once it gets to halfway, that's when the crop dies if you've used fertilizer. But I've done the hard part, and now it's just a matter of running around and watering until the crops are fully grown. do one more round of watering after this one and then we should be good 
Ah, did I mean to click there? Sometimes the camera can cause you to click the crop just because they're so big. But yeah, you can see the circle only gets to halfway if you use the fertilizer, so that's why it's quicker. However, this is the lowest experience method. Just trying to show different ways of doing this since I am doing a standalone episode on the farm tithe. Oh no, I lost, I lost two. Oh, what am I doing? That was pretty bad. But you get the point, right? You get the point. Let me harvest these dead crops and I can't believe I lost those. That's kind of annoying. So actually my first time doing that strategy. I don't really like it. It's a little... Again, it's not as good of experience and it seems a little bit tighter. So I don't really see much advantage in doing it. I think maybe you could get points a little bit faster because you're harvesting a ton of crops quickly. But maybe that's not the case. Once you're done though, you can deposit here. All right. Now let me show you the strategy that I actually have been using in my streams. And I'm gonna do two rounds of it because the second round is really where the magic happens. So I'm gonna go down these two rows and just plant zigzag. And I'm supposed to water them as well as I'm planting. I forgot about that. I got used to the fertilizer strategy there. You can drop the fertilizer bucket too because you're not going to be using it. So yeah, I'm just going to zigzag and water as I plant. As such. And if you're quick and you time it right, you can cancel out animation, save some frames. Which will be good. And then for this one, I'm not going to zigzag. I'm just going to go straight up. And then straight down this way. A little bit bad on the timing. So you do need a seed dibbler, of course, to plant these. And then you're going to need a spade to harvest the crops. So those are the things you should bring with you. And I'm going to go down this plot here. So I'm using a full five patches for this strategy. And you know what? Let me drop the fertilizer. Might as well. And then I can just start watering all of these. Zigzag the first two. So you have to be kind of quick with this, but it's a little bit more forgiving than that fertilizer strategy, in my opinion. The only time I failed this is when I got kind of busy chatting with people during the stream. The hardest part is always the first round where you're planting the seed and watering at the same time. If you get your timing wrong, it can cost you a few precious seconds. But once you're on this watering only phase, you're pretty much good to go. Should do one last round of watering here. And again, the full circle is in play here, so you don't have to worry about it getting to the halfway point, just because there's no fertilizer this time around, so... They grow pretty well. With my agility, I can usually do this pretty well without having to worry about running out of uh, run energy or stamina. Every once in a while, I might need to rest a few minutes to let it recover but overall it's pretty good and that's essentially all there is to it but I'm gonna show you where the magic really happens with this strategy here in just a second so after this first round we're gonna take it up a notch we're going to harvest plant and water for the next round 
So like this, we're gonna harvest and we're gonna plant and repeat. Like this, you don't have to do it. You could harvest everything and then kind of reset and start over, but this will save time. It will increase your experience rate and how many crops you're getting per hour but you are going to have to focus because it is obviously going to be a little bit tighter on the timing. But it's a little bit forgiving, right? You can, you don't have to freak out about it. You can make a few mistakes and still be okay. As you will see. Trying to pay attention here so I don't mess up for you guys. I already lost two crops on that fertilizer method, which was embarrassing. I'm not going to lose any more crops, I promise. This is the uh, strategy I was using on stream, so I'm well practiced in this one. Let's see, I got this down pretty well. Making my way around. Should have plenty of time left over here to start the next watering cycle. All right, and you can see I got Significant amount of time to spare here, so no worries. Pretty simple. I didn't play perfectly, and I still had plenty of time, so this strategy is very fast. You get excellent experience, you get a lot of crops, and it is somewhat forgiving, so this is what I like to use. And then there's a super crazy strategy, which I'll be showing you after this round of harvest which I've never tried before because I kind of wanted something a little bit more laid back, but I figured I'll try it out for this episode. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna do one more round of watering before I can harvest. And kind of waiting on this one a little bit. That was odd. Last bit of watering here. You can see my crops are gonna start to get fully grown. Very good. I find this strategy to be very relaxing, pretty fun to do. It can be click intensive as you can see. But it's enjoyable. I could see why people would hate this mini game, because it is very repetitive. It is click intensive. But on paper, I would say I would hate this. But I actually enjoy this. I have a lot of fun playing this mini game. And there you go. Everything is nice and watered and cropped. And then from here, you would just repeat the same thing that I just did: harvest, plant, and water all in one turn. But since I'm done showing you this method, I'm just going to harvest all of these and then I'm going to show you the advanced method. Or I'm going to try to show you, because again, I never tried it. We'll see if I can do it. Well, let me harvest the crops. A little music here does get repetitive too. I always randomize when I'm streaming, so it's not the same track over and over. But for episodes, I like each region to have its own music that it's supposed to play, so. It is a bit of a banger, but not on repeat. And there you go, two successful harvests. And then of course you can deposit here at the sack. 
and you can always get more water if you need here at the barrel. Excellent. All right, so let me get ready for the final strategy. Okay, so for this final strategy, I'm actually going to start with this little patch here. It's going to be crazy. You can't harvest plant and water all in one go on the second turn you're doing this. As you're going to see, it's going to be very click intensive. Hopefully, I can do this without fail. We will see. Oh, no, I already started off bad. I misclicked there. So I'm going to zigzag these two plots. And hopefully do okay. I think this is supposed to be very tight. Just gonna spam plant everything and be pretty crazy gonna get a lot of plots filled up here I'm actually kind of worried about the timing here I wonder how forgiving it actually is Right, and now I'm just going to go all the way down here. Hopefully have enough time. You can see this is pretty intense. I mean, like you're filling up this entire place. Wonder how that first crop is doing. Is it dead? I hope not. Oh, it's got plenty of time on it. All right, now we're just going to water. Okay, that wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. So now it's just a matter of doing this. Water it a couple times. Should be good. I kind of like to put myself in the middle of four crops here for the watering, as you can see. So instead of just crawling up to this next one, watch how I'm going to go in this tile. That way I'm in between all four. I think that does save a little bit of time overall. Like this. And then here I'm just going to go all the way down. Be all right. This strategy is really not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I wonder if it's faster than the one I just showed you. According to the wiki, I think it is. Maybe this is what I should have been doing in stream. Too late now. I mean, I guess I probably will be back here in the future to do a little bit more of this to get my farming level up. But for now, I think that's enough farming, right? We gotta get back to the main action. I put the winter tot on hold even though I'm so close. I'm only like a couple hours away from 99 fire making. I put it on hold to come farm. You can see this is a little bit more of a run intensive method. Very nice though to have essentially almost this entire farm filled up with crops. It's a little bit more exciting. And now it's just a matter of harvesting. So yeah, you don't have enough time to harvest, plant, and water and do this strategy. I think there's a minor tweak you could make to this to where it theoretically becomes possible. But it is totally unforgiving. Like, you only have like a five second buffer window. So, if you do any misclick or you mistime anything, then you're a goner. So, I'm not even going to attempt that. I think 
the three strategies I have shown you is sufficient for a tight farm episode, right? And you can kind of determine which one you like the best. I did not like that compost method, not at all. It's the lowest experience rate per hour, and in my opinion, it was actually the hardest of the three. Which doesn't make sense. This is a good 25 crop as opposed to 20 with the previous method. Very good. And then you can just deposit this anywhere. Why not right here? There you go. So ideally, you would not leave the tithe farm until you've deposited at least 100 fruit because then you get a couple of extra points for doing that. But since this is just an episode that I'm trying to show stuff, I'm going to leave so I can show you some rewards. And that'll be the final part of the episode. Hello, young sir. Did you want to work on my farm? Have you got any rewards? All right, let me... Bang, pin it up. So these are all the rewards. You got the farmer's outfit, which I am wearing. So I did get that with the points I got from the stream. To do all of it, you're going to need a total of 400 points to get all of this. And then you can get some compost for one point, super compost for five get some grape seeds for a couple points the herb box which I guess could be pretty good and then I got the Grickler's can I forgot how much this cost me I want to say it was 200 you can recharge it for two which doesn't really make sense since you can just refill it at the water and then you can get a seed box which I have not gotten yet which is great because it stores your seeds for farming saves a lot of inventory slots so let me go ahead and buy one of these and then the herb sack, I cannot get because I believe you need 55 herb lore. So it is something that I'm going to come back for eventually. And then you can get auto weed to where weed doesn't grow on your farming patches in the overworld. And you can turn it on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that as well. It is activated. And then just for some funsies, let's buy one herb box. And we'll open it up. So those are all the rewards. What did I get? I got a grimy marantil. Oh wow, you can just like keep spam clicking this. You get a bunch. Excellent. I don't know if I'm high enough herb lore to clean some of these other ones, but yeah, that's it. That is the Tithe Farm. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And in the next one, I'm going to be doing some questing and you'll understand as to why I took this detour to the farm Tithe. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by the Renaissance Gaming Monastery. I hope you join our community on Discord and Twitter. These videos are produced with a lot of hard work and love. If you think they're worth a dollar, I'd be grateful for your contribution. You can send a thanks donation or become a member on YouTube. You can also support through PayPal, Patreon, or even with cryptocurrency. All links are in the description. See you on the next video.